It was a bittersweet evening for Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, who emerged victorious in this weekend's elections. The polls were meant to break a parliamentary deadlock. Instead, the divisions have only deepened. We'll act responsibly and generously, and I will try this time to put together a government no matter what. We will have a progressive government. Because of that, we'll unblock the political situation in the country. Sanchez's Socialist Workers' Party remains the biggest bloc, but lost three seats. It's well short of a majority with just 120 out of the chamber's 350. The main opposition People's Party took 88 seats for a gain of 22. But the night's biggest winner was the far-right and anti-immigration Vox Party. It more than doubled its seats to 52, becoming the third biggest force in parliament. Its best success last night has been the far-right um, the far right Vox Party. The, the Conservatives, uh, the, the People's Party, they had a much better result than they had before, but not enough for the right-wing bloc to form a government. So it is really, it's important for Vox. It is significant, um, but it's not uh, a victory as such. So in a way, everybody has lost something in the election. The political uncertainty is bad news for the economy. Growth is expected to slow to 1.5% in 2020 from 2.5% last year. Much-needed reforms to cut red tape and slash debt have stalled for years and are now expected to only languish for even longer. Paulo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, for more on Spain's political stalemate, let's go to Daniel Lacay, chief economist at asset management firm Tresis. He's also an economic advisor to Spain's conservative popular party. And he joins us now from Madrid. Welcome back to the program, Daniel. As we heard there, Spain's governing uh, socialists won the most seats in Sunday's elections, but fell short of a majority. What happens now? It is very complicated because uh, uh, the, the problem that existed before, which was the, the deadlock, uh, remains. Actually, it's probably gotten a little bit worse uh, from where it was in April considering that the Socialist Party, although it has won the election, it has lost seats both at Parliament and at the Senate. And additionally, uh, the, the Parliament is more divided than it was before. So it, it is very challenging. We will need to see the round of consultations between the uh, candidate for Prime Minister and the rest of the political uh, parties and see what arithmetics of uh, agreements can be achieved. But it is not easy, definitely. Not. Mm. Now, even, even though they lost seats, the governing socialists remain the most popular party in Spain. And we know that party has a progressive agenda. What do their economic policies look like? Well, the, the Socialist Party went into the elections with, uh, with a few uh, uh, of their key messages coming from increasing government spending. Uh, increasing welfare subsidies and putting uh, more uh, more of an of an incentive on public investment. Additionally, uh, reducing the deficit through higher taxes. So it was. Uh, the typical uh, social democrat uh, program. It was quite more uh, moderate than what uh, Mr. Sanchez presented for the April elections. I think that the Socialist Party was aiming at uh, gaining some uh, votes from the from the centre, and um, and it's been quite vague about the increase in taxes, for, uh, predominantly at the end of the campaign. Yes. Now, Spain, as we know, is suffering from slowing growth and its unemployment rate is the second highest in the EU. What, in your view, needs to be done now in order to address those crucial issues? Absolutely. I think that what, what is needed is a, is a very important set of reforms that uh, put the, at the forefront of the economic policy to facilitate job creation. Uh, Spain's main problem uh, as regards unemployment is the fact that it is extremely onerous and very challenging to hire. It is not so much about flexibility in uh, letting go people, it's much more about the uh, cost and the uh, challenges to hire people. 
It is also a country that, being one of the leading economies in the Eurozone, has a very low uh, score in uh, ease of doing business. So, therefore, these things need to, be, need to be improved. I think that that is a key factor in reducing unemployment. Another key factor is attracting more investment from abroad. And finally, uh, a very important factor as well is fighting against the underground economy. Yes, the headline unemployment rate is very high, but there is also a, a problem of uh, underground economy that needs to be uh, tackled. And there's been some important measures uh, taken in the past years, but there needs to be more. OK, it'll be interesting to see what Pedro Sanchez does in terms of cobbling together a coalition government. Daniel Lacaille, always great to get your thoughts. Thank you.